it's almost like you said, it's like going to war. Trial is hard on the mind and the body. And if you come out losing, it hurts, as you know, a lot. I mean, so obviously you are a lot more experienced, a lot more successful than you've ever been. But when you lose a trial, and I know it happens to everybody, um, how do you find the ability to go do it again? <laughs> I, I, I'm thinking I would just be crushed and I would, I would be just licking my wounds forever. So how do you get back and, and how do you go through that process? Well, uh, not too long ago, as, as you know, uh, that happens. Um, You feel the pain. You breathe it in. Um, there's a book I read many years ago, The Magic of No Escape. Um, I think it's Tangram or Tangam. Uh, it's an experience of, of breathing in pain, mm -hmm. the pain of the world, uh, and holding it inside and then transmuting it into, into joy and breathing it out so that those who need it um, can, can breathe. Um, it's not for everybody. Uh, it's not a masochist deal, but I asked Benz, what do you do with the pain? He was kind of walking away many years ago. He stopped and said, who asked that? Who asked that question? I had raised, I should have known, it's you, Alondra. <laughs> and I said, the pain of what? Losing, losing for your client when they right. have, uh, he goes, you feel it. You feel it in your tenders. You breathe it in. You, you feel it until you cannot endure the pain anymore. Mm -hmm. when, when we lose, you're in a, a life is lost. Sometimes death, um, Sometimes they turn the lights out. Sometimes they don't, they can't. I mean, you were their last hope. Right. And uh, you have to live with that. Uh, I know many of my friends, they say, well, the next trial, will, I'll just forget about it. And, and they go into a, a, a sense of numbing. But you can't do your best if you're numb. Mm -hmm. You know, Vincent Van Gogh, he, he painted out of his pain. And then he did amazing work. I don't know if you have you stood in front of a Van Gogh lately, but if you haven't, uh, you should go to Pasadena. The Simon Rosenthal Museum is man in a hat. It's a self-portrait, and it strikes you in the heart, and it pushes you back. Um, so the artistry of trial work is to be able to experience that pain mm -hmm. and to let go. We are instruments, if, if you are a believer in the Christ of mercy, if you are a believer in the uh, universe uh, and the energy of the universe, you're a conduit of the, um, of the energy of the universe. What I've learned is if, if I can lay to my rest, knowing that I gave it all, I'll just feel the pain. Mm -hmm. And then I'll breathe in and breathe out and I'll stand again because mm -hmm. so many people need our help. Mm -hmm. Now I wish, I wish I could say anything more um, helpful, but mm -hmm. you have to fight the unbeatable foe. There's no way, out, out, way around it. Mm -hmm. you just have to stand and do it again. Isn't, isn't, isn't that life though? Isn't that is, isn't, I mean, it's like the profession itself is trying to right or wrong. I think our life is about righting our wrongs, but the mistakes or the failures along the way, at least from my experience, I used to be really tough on myself or I still am, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I have developed this awareness that we talk about I've become a lot more, grounded and, and I've come closer to myself, my own power, my own 
confidence as, as a woman, as a person, but it is, I think it's just, it's all about contrast. Life gives you contrast and then you have a choice to take the contrast and do the best you can to rise above, overcome, uh, transform, expand in the process, or it becomes this pattern of things don't work out for me or things aren't, you know, easy for me. And, and it's, it's very, very easy to fall and default into like, this is life is hard. Woe is me. Right. And I think what I respect so much um, of what you do and many other trial lawyers that are successful, I mean, the most successful lawyers I know are very vulnerable beings and very much in touch with themselves, their awareness, their energy, their faith. Um, and they're by no means, and they'll tell you, they struggle with imposter syndrome. They struggle with insecurities. They don't know if they like themselves or if they, you know, they don't fully, like it becomes blurry, like who they are and where they fit in because they, again, you, you kind of do this, but, but that's, what's so special about these people. And that's, I think what sets them apart is that they're, willing to embrace these feelings and they're willing to live through these feelings and they almost like sail through. In fact, I was, I, I watched a um, documentary the other night, which I swear I went to sleep and I couldn't stop thinking about it. I was dreaming, but it was a documentary about climbers. Um, these climbers who will climb the tallest mountains without ropes. I mean, freestyling. And these are, 20, 30 year olds who just that is living on the edge, right? Is, is their, their life's purpose. And one of the guys who unfortunately died in, in, in an avalanche in uh, Alaska, he was 25 years old on his birthday. But before that, it showed the journey of how, why he was one of the best. And he would climb, in fact, in Patagonia. He climbed one of the mountains that's a well-known mountain there. I forget the name of the mountain, but it's like this small little town. It's, it's like the scary mountain. Nobody's ever climbed it. So long story short, he had this ability to focus through just climbing and not thinking about what if I fall. Right. There was, and I thought that has to be one of the deepest Simple, very, very simple, but one of the deepest things uh, to learn because he had this intuitiveness about him to know that he all he had to do is not focus on anything else, but on the next move, on the next reach. Right. And he was so comfortable with the mountain that he always found a way. You don't always find the way. And sometimes we do fall and we do die. But I think in that journey of pursuing what's true and what's meaningful, um, you're also living to the fullest. And maybe this is why we're here. Maybe it is to feel all these feelings and to know the value of life. So I think a trial lawyer does that a lot. A trial lawyer that's in touch with himself or herself in a courtroom representing, you're advocating for somebody who needs you um it's heroic it's it's respectable and even if you lose the fact that you tried and put your heart and soul into it is very respectable so i i, I admire what you do so much and and that's why i love this profession you know just i asked you why you love law this is why i love it is because i see glimpses of humanity in the most profound way all the time in this business and I, I don't think you can say that in every industry or in every job, but it's very inspiring and it moves me into action in my own field and the things that I do for a living. So, yeah, I don't know. I went in on the tangent there. You see, you got me all. <laughs> well, um, you, you said in terms of the journey, um, climbing is, is very akin to, to trial work. Um, 
there is every case has a move that if you do not do exactly per, execute perfectly it's called yeah. we call it the crux yeah. if you do not execute the crux move perfectly you you die you die yeah uh, and as a trial lawyer you know you you learn the few few times that you don't execute yeah. you don't understand what happened you think because you, you you've done it you then you begin to be aware of when you didn't don't do it and you know you died but the trial is not over yet mm -hmm. and uh, after a few of those you realize okay i'm going to avoid the crux i'm going to do something different uh, in in uh, free solo uh, i forget the name of the climber but he started climbing uh, el capitan and stopped because he knew he did not have the crux resolved and went back uh, a couple of years, uh, sometimes later, and, and he climbed it again, and, and he had that resolved. And it's not the Rubicon of Julius Caesar, because the Rubicon is a very small river. It's not a big river, but there comes a time in law that you say, okay, what about me? Mm -hmm. What about me is not able to make this move? And so instead of a journey of learning a technique, what I have found for me is it's an exploration of the self. Um, some years ago, I read a, a book uh, recommended by a Republican think tanker, um, a, a, a Clearing in the Forest. Mm -hmm. And that allowed me to retool the imagery of my life from a journey from A to a destination death uh, from that to an exploration of the whole self that I am. Um, in, in mythology, uh, the, the jungle or the forest is a place where the feminine, uh, the, myth, the mythical feminine inhabits. Uh, and of course, ma males have a feminine, inner feminine. And what I started to do was explore the entirety of, of, of that forest, not just the, the open parts and the, the pretty gardens, but the scary places. Mm -hmm. And since then, what I've noticed is there's been, um, uh, and I, I guess it comes with age too, you know, it's, but it, there's been a, a settling down of knowing who I am of knowing that in this part of my forest, this is what I am, that this is, and inter putting that together with the, the, the stuff that I was mentioning before, the, the stereotypical stereotypes uh, of Carl Jung's uh, analysis, um, the id, the ego, the superego, it, it gave me the sense, okay, the jury wants to do the right thing. The defense wants to sell a, a fake narrative or an, an absurd narrative, what kills that? What, what, what trumps, and I hate to use that word, but what, yeah. cuts, through that, what cuts through that morass? Mm. Truth. Authenticity. And, yeah. and, and caring. When, when you come to the court and you leave it all, if you don't win, then nobody can win. 